Welcome to the feedback on the extension exercise we asked you to look at in order to help you confirm your understanding of the material that we covered in Module 1. In the extension exercises, we asked you to develop a functional hierarchy and a physical hierarchy for the domestic dwelling based on a list of functions and physical terms that you developed in Exercise 2 for this module. We must point out first, of course, that there are many functional and physical hierarchies that could be developed for a given system, given the same set of functional descriptions. And as a result, there is no correct answer. A test of whether the hierarchy is appropriate or not is whether it describes the sufficient functional or physical architecture that we're trying to show for the system we're trying to describe. Now, since we can't provide you with a perfect solution over the following slides, we will show you a couple of different ways that the functional descriptions can be turned into a functional hierarchy and a couple of ways in which the physical descriptions can be turned into a physical hierarchy. This first example of a functional hierarchy groups all the functional descriptions related to sheltering. Now, sheltering in this functional hierarchy is the primary function of the dwelling, with all the other functions that may be undertaken indoors shown as being subordinate to it. In exercise 2 for this module, swimming was listed as a possible function that could be considered as a sub-function of sheltering, as it could indicate that the owner wishes to have an indoor swimming pool. However, we've not included it above. Similarly, work could be both a function of sheltering or it could be an outdoor function. So here's another way we might group the functions. In the previous example, entertaining was considered one of the subordinate functions of the sheltering function. In this hierarchy, entertaining is considered the primary function of the dwelling and therefore, since it's not subordinate to sheltering, considers both indoor and outdoor entertaining. Also note that eating in the previous example was a function of sheltering, but now it's a sub-function of entertaining. So your hierarchy will contain the elements we've just described, but will no doubt be part of a much larger diagram and will be in a particular order, depending on what importance you place on those functions and how you wish to show them for your particular dwelling. Let's go and look at some examples of an appropriate physical architecture. Now remember we said there's no absolute correct hierarchy, and this is particularly true for the physical hierarchy, since it's here where the owners start to have a preference for how their house will look, in other words, how the functions that they're looking for are going to be implemented in their physical house. It follows that every one of us who starts with the same functional description would end up with a separate or different preferred physical architecture because it's all a matter of taste. So each of you then would have a particular type of dwelling in mind and therefore would have a quite different physical architecture in your particular solution to this exercise. Now having said that, of course a house is a house in many respects and we're talking about solution spaces that have a lot in common. So whilst we might have significant variance between our solutions, they really ought to have a similar look and feel. That is, they should look like a house, not some sort of factory, for example. Despite the way in which you've described your house, what we've tried to show here is a couple of different ways in which you may have described it. One is to describe it in terms of the utilities that are required for the dwelling. So, for example, here we're talking about uh, plumbing, electrical, air conditioning and heating, and so on. Now, of course, uh, to fit it on the slide, we could fit a lot more. We need to add a lot more functions, and it's not as complete as it could be, but it's just to show you that this is one way in which we might break up the physical structure of the house. Presenting this information in this way, you can see that there's a need for electrical wiring to the other elements of the house, so to bedrooms, to kitchens and entertaining areas. The wiring in each of those areas, say the bedroom, will be broken down further then into the individual bedrooms and the individual ways in which the wiring is laid out in those areas. The electrical physical architecture could also include the communications architecture, such as phone lines and network cabling that's contained within the house. This second physical hierarchy provides a representation of the areas of the, of the dwelling, the layout of the dwelling. And this hierarchy probably provides us a much better description at first glance of what the, the building is to provide for us. So you can see the use of each of the areas. So the number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms, the types of entertainment areas are all immediately visible. And of course, again, there are many ways that we might create those groups of the different physical descriptions that make up a house. So as you can see from the four examples we provide you for the solutions for the extension exercise for Module 1, there is no absolutely correct answer for any particular problem. 
In fact, there could be many, and in fact, the owners of the problem have a significant input because largely the physical solution, the layout of the physical solution, is a matter of significant personal preference. It's what the business wants, which is most important to us when we come to do the physical mapping. This holds true for many of the aspects of systems engineering, as the need for a system is often quite broad, and there are therefore many physical solutions that could fulfil that need, even if we had the same functional description of the system of interest. Well, we hope you enjoyed the Module 1 extension exercise.